Dan O'Brien's sudden retirement in 2016 was a shock. For somebody that had such a successful career that spanned two decades, multiple time world champion, a WrestleMania main eventer, it was bittersweet to realize this man is not going to have closure to his career. It was premature. Dan O'Brien had to watch on the sidelines as several iconic talent came to the forefront. He was also under the belief that WWE forced him to retire, fearing the worst for him. So O'Brien took matters into his own hands. His intention was to get cleared by as many doctors as he could and it got to the point where O'Brien was strongly considering leaving WWE to wrestle on the indies and potentially make appearances in New Japan. But suddenly he was cleared and Brian's return felt gracious. I was glad to see him because he was one of my favorites and it was almost surreal. Now it's like, oh, Brian Daniels is wrestling cool. But back then it felt special. The thing is, even though this was Daniel Bryan, his 2018 was extremely disappointing. Dream matches of Jeff Hardy, but it felt off. And as crazy as it sounds, Daniel Bryan was cold. Why? Because. But to put it simply, he didn't have a very great feud with The Miz, the whole big cast thing. Then he lost to AJ Styles for the title. It was clear that he wasn't going to Saudi Arabia, and any other wrestler they'd get punched, but for Bryan, this was a reward. On the November 13, 2018 episode of SmackDown, Daniel Bryan got himself a WWE Championship match against AJ Styles. This title shot was abrupt and since Styles had a lot of animosity with the leader of the Yes Movement, he put the title on the line. Bryan's momentum was shot, he was getting booed which sounds insane but anyways, Styles targeted the leg as he found great success weeks earlier making him tap out. But this time Bryan was determined. He also realized that taking the shortcut was for the best and so he kicked AJ Styles in the balls and dropped him with a knee to capture the title. He followed up by attacking him afterwards so now Daniel Bryan was once again holding the most coveted gold. He had just renewed his contract with WWE and this was his reward. It also helped that Styles had already faced Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series, so having the fresh match was a better decision. Now Daniel Bryan didn't really have an idea of this heel turn until the day of the show. In true WWE fashion, this was all spur of the moment. It was a day of change and for me it was awesome because it was a clean slate. The old question when I came back was, I'm really excited to come back to wrestling, but you also have to deal with expectations, personal and company expectations and all that kind of stuff. Whereas when the heel turn happened, there's a clean slate. It's a blank page where I can draw whatever I want, and that's exciting. One of the things I loved about independent wrestling before I got to WWE is the ability to tinker with things. I could be a different character when I'm in England or Ring of Honor or Japan or Germany. I could change all these things, but it's been very fun to tinker almost every week, and I'm enjoying things that I'm playing with from a character and wrestling perspective. That's been a lot of fun. High key, this was a dream match, but Brian's heel turn was well done. It just came from out of nowhere and changed the complexion of SmackDown Live. On his match with Brock Lesnar, Kayla Braxton asked Brian if he was prepared. He no-sold this question and walked away. This match had more of an unpredictable element when compared to Styles' match with Lesnar. Why? Because Brian had just won the title and this was his first appearance, so it could have gone either way. Even if Brock Lesnar had the edge, Brian's attitude towards this match was pure confidence. He was pressing Lesnar hard with a smile on his face and right out of the gate, Brian went after the leg. He was jogging and dancing around and just pissing off the Universal Champion. One clubbing blow was more than enough to give Brian a ride to the place known as Suplex City. A one-way ticket sent Brian into a tailspin. It was getting worse and worse and it also didn't help that he had a neck injury in the past. His tactics were thrown out the window and he was thrown off his game big time. SmackDown's champion was about to go down with one single kick to his name in this match. F5 and Lesnar still wants to continue the match. Why? To inflict more damage and make a joke out of the WWE Champion. This was a huge tactical error because when Lesnar hit the F5, he pushed Bryan into the ref giving him a much needed opening which he made the most out of. He kicked him in the balls and hit the knee. The crowd was all in. They believed it was over but Lesnar kicked out. And that was all the Champion needed because from here, he dished out a grade A beat down the display Bryan's newfound aggression. Lesnar looked like he bit off far more than he could chew with that mistake and it wasn't getting any better. Yet another knee stunned the beast but he still had enough to kick out again. Dan O'Brien opted to focus on the legs to wear down the Universal Champion and it seemed like the victory was in sight but he was caught in F5 position. For all of two seconds and there was the yes lock. Lesnar was on the verge of tapping. Ryan was super vicious on the attack and would stop at nothing to get the tap out victory but Lesnar's tenacity forced the escape. Armbar transitioned into the F5 and Brock Lesnar wins. A masterful performance from both men. Dan O'Brien had this vagueness about him heading into it. His attitude and intentions were very mysterious and since he had just turned heel, nobody knew what was on his mind. Brock Lesnar, everybody knew his simple game plan. The feelings and emotions this match brought rivaled just about any. I've had so much fun watching this match again, it had incredible storytelling, Brian weaseling his way to victory in a way only 2008 Edge could, and it's easily one of the best matches of 2018. And I'll even go as far as to say it was a top 10 match in Brock Lesnar and Daniel Bryan's career. That's how good I thought it was. Brian was very, very, very excited to wrestle Brock Lesnar. I was thrilled. I was absolutely thrilled, Brian said. I wanted the Brock Lesnar match for a long time, but how I always envisioned it was babyface Dan O'Brien, yes man Dan O'Brien, underdog Dan O'Brien against the killer Brock Lesnar. But I had literally just become the planet's champion and kicked AJ Styles in the nuts. So it was a really weird thing, but I think the weirdness of it also made it fun and made it more pleasurable for me. 
That match is something that I'm really, really proud of, and it was a test for me, Brian said. I don't think there's anybody in the history of WWE who's been more excited to take a German suplex from Brock Lesnar than me. Just to be like, oh, let's see, we got to see what I got here. Am I good? German suplex, yeah, I'm good. Later that week on SmackDown, Daniel Bryan finally addressed his actions, and at this point, it was already confirmed that AJ Styles would receive a rematch against Bryan at TLC. Daniel Bryan spoke in third person here, explaining his displeasure for betraying himself by retiring three years ago. His fight within was all down to being a failure, and retirement meant he failed. That's why he saw all those doctors, it was to bring himself back to the rink. Three hours a day in those oxygen chambers, he found the opportunity to meditate and realize that fighting for your dreams will get your dreams to fight for you, and it worked. That's why he's back. It was a great moment when he returned, but the fans thought it was just that, a moment. His anger was with the fans being unable to see the struggles it took to get to that point in New Orleans. The doctors were telling him to move on. He didn't, but the fans did. Fickle was the word of the day for Brian to describe these fans. They cheered him loud, but now it's AJ Styles. And Dan O'Brien took notice. He noticed them slowly moving on, and that's when he stopped fighting. When the referee was down, Dan O'Brien's dreams kicked AJ Styles in the balls. His dreams made him realize he didn't need these people for anything. Same thing as Survivor Series. He didn't need to beat Brock Lesnar to win. His dreams allowed him to beat the weakness out of Brock Lesnar. The Dan O'Brien that the fans loved is dead. The Yes movement is dead, and all that was left was the new Dan O'Brien, the WWE Champion. All that mattered is Brian doesn't give up on his dream again. I assume the dream is the title. Because during the promo, he was basically describing the dream as that. Incredible promo. Dan O'Brien's self-realization that the fans didn't benefit him brought him the title, basically. His PTSD from those oxygen chambers, the trials and tribulations to get himself back, could have been for nothing had he never gave into his dream. As for AJ Styles, the kick in the balls brought one emotion out of him. Anger. Styles without the WWE Championship on his waist was very bizarre. It was glued to him for over a year, and seeing him without it was like seeing him naked. Styles said that the 14 days without the title felt longer than the 371 days he held the title. He hated losing, but was more angry at the way he lost it. Styles knew that being champion on Target would be on his back, and he knew that sometimes you want something so badly, but what also frustrated him was Brian attacking him afterwards. AJ Styles was impatient and wanted to fight, but the problem was Brian wasn't here. He told Brian to not forget the title at TLC because it belongs to him. The following week, The Miz hosted Miz TV. His guest, the new Daniel Bryan. Miz acknowledged Bryan's change of character and credited himself for being right about things. Daniel Bryan said that listening to the fans would ruin his dream, but he came to the realization that he doesn't care about these people and allowed his dreams to take control. He used the what chant against the fans here, calling them fickle. Bryan said that his old self combined with his intelligence of the new Daniel Bryan would be dangerous. Miz was like, I've been saying this. You won the title by doing whatever it takes. I say that. Now, this is the difference maker. Daniel Bryan said that he kicked one man on one day. The fans, though, they pollute the earth in many ways, and the fans started booing. That's like what many say. 50 Cent included. You shouldn't throw stones if you live in a glass house. That's exactly what it was here. Brian told them not to count the sins. I do one thing on one day, you guys do these things every day. And Miz looked like the babyface. His issue came down to Brian portraying him as the bad guy. He saw through him everything. He saw through everything and asked the question, are you WWE champion because you listened to what I said? And Brian answered yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. It didn't matter to him. All that mattered was the old Dan or Brian was dead. The yes movement, dead. All of a sudden, AJ Styles came on and his eyes were poised for a fight. Brian shoved the Miz into AJ and made a run for it. The Miz took it from there and hit the skull crushing finale. Brian followed up later that night with an attack sending a message to AJ Styles. He's like, fickle, 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 fickle to end SmackDown on top. Brian the following week called the fans parasites because of their consumption and waste of the earth. He's like, oh, now you like AJ Styles. And then said that he didn't know whether or not people were stupid or just purposefully hiding themselves from stuff. All of a sudden, Mustafa Ali made his debut. Brian interrupted him and told him to come to the ring. He tried convincing him not to have the match, calling the fans all kinds of things. Fickle, xenophobic, but Ali wasn't having it. He said that Brian was an inspiration. The 205 Live guys looked up to him. The old Daniel Bryan would want to fight, and that's exactly what he wanted here. He then asked him, <laughs> this was hilarious. He's like, what kind of car do you drive? He's like, SUV. He's like, why would a small man like you drive an SUV? And he slapped him before bossing him. Ali turned things around, and the match begins. Brian ended up tapping Ali out, continuing his newfound momentum ahead of TLC. So this is what it's come down to. AJ Styles' month was filled with anguish. He was getting attacked, was left sidelined for two weeks, and most importantly, lost the WWE Championship. For him, this was about redemption. For Daniel Bryan, his dream turned into a reality. He often took what the fans said to heart and considered himself the leader of the Yes Movement. Kicking Styles on the ball set him free from the prison that was the Yes Movement, and in doing so, he received the ultimate prize.
His intention here was to bring out the emotions from AJ Styles. As the commentary said, Styles was at his best without the emotions at play. Brian's vicious streak came to play and the action was slow and methodical from his part. Whenever Styles was on offense, he was wrestling with anger. This was well worked, it was slowly building up and after the Boston Crab, which was originally supposed to be the Styles Clash, it kicked up a notch. What it came down to was Brian's intelligence in a sudden small package. These men fought their hearts out and I think we the people forget just how good this match was because it really was incredible. It's nothing talking about it, you just have to watch it, you know, like I, I, don't, I can't really explain why it was so good. It was just well done. I'm not gonna say it was as good as others say, it is, you know, like Dave Meltzer gave this match almost five stars but it was great and definitely was one of wwe's best matches from 2018. In a surprise turn of events mustafa ali scored a victory over the new daniel bryan on smackdown an upset it was a big win and this led to Dan O'Brien attacking him the following week. Meanwhile, Vince McMahon asked AJ Styles what his name was. He said that this is AJ Styles and this is the house that he built. And McMahon couldn't bring himself to understand why Styles was allowing Bryan to compete and do whatever he wants in his house. He believed that Styles was complacent and was hiding a burning hole inside. McMahon wanted that animal to be brought out and Styles did it. It felt like a segment straight from 2003. It just gave off that vibe, you know. McMahon's like, I want to see the real you, this and that. He took the strike and was proud of himself despite being on the verge of dying from an AJ Styles punch. When their next confrontation occurred, Styles was very hostile and refused to apologize saying McMahon intentionally provoked him. And he got what he wanted. This was clearly a plan from the boss as AJ Styles went on to become number one contender for the title at the Royal Rumble. With AJ Styles getting his rematch, Dan O'Brien wanted to teach him something. Now I assume AJ likes meat, but... How does this relate to him? Well, he was complaining about the concession stands and trashed the audience for eating hot dogs, candy. And he started talking about how the fans try to fill that empty void. And that's why they cheer AJ Styles. Now, at this point, I've never seen someone get pressed at somebody else for eating hot dogs or soda like this. Like, this bro, bro literally destroyed him, threw a soda at the other guy, and began shouting about stuff, how it's a waste. Like, he literally just wasted it over here, right? It's like, everything's a waste. AJ Styles' is merch, it's a way to fill empty voids, and it's meaningless. And he said that the fans were weak and submissive impotent and he wanted to change all of it from out of nowhere r-truth attack they have a match brian wins but afterwards aj styles brought the fight on this incident brian asked if styles attacked him to fill the void for the fans or is he attacking him because he's not the wwe champion he promised that this was nothing nobody's seen what he's capable of and said that he'll never take the championship away from him why because he's fighting for a bigger cause aj styles meanwhile did the opposite of what brian had been preaching he was giving Dan and Brian, of course, wasn't too fond of all this giving, or as he calls this, meaningless stuff. This didn't go the way he planned, and Brian had yet to figure out the real AJ Styles yet. On the final SmackDown before the Royal Rumble, Mr. McMahon hosted a face-to-face -face confrontation between Dan and Brian and AJ Styles. Brian refused to stand in the same ring as AJ Styles and said that he had a vision of Styles as champion. He called it an ignorant, impotent future. That's why he refuses to allow him to take this. He said that AJ Styles uses his fame for power and money, whereas he uses it for the greater good. Styles asked him, like, if if you talk about the greater good, why you come out and talk like a jackass or something along the lines of that? He said that Styles never made the fans think. He doesn't make them feel bad about themselves, and that's what he does. He's not the people's champion, he's the planet's champion. There it is. Brian uses his platform to be the planet's voice, and Styles said that if the planet had a voice, it'd be screaming for Brian to shut up. And he found it ironic. He said that Brian didn't ride a bike to the show, he rode on a plane as well. And he called it fickle. Styles claimed that Brian had fear in his eyes. He called out Brian's morals being corrupted for the title and asked what he'll have left when he loses it. Vince had enough of this and he's like, hop on, get your ass in the ring. He then called them out saying his generation took and gave nothing back, yet the fans bowed to him for it. They're out here looking for Instagram likes while McMahon hoards all the money. He told them once again to get in the ring. Brian refuses and Styles goes after him. He was about to hit the phenomenal forearm when Brian pushed Vince in the way leading to the knee. Okay, good, good, good ass build. I do think it should have been an ODQ match because these two had a couple of matches together, you know, here and there, and that would have been great for the blow off. Okay, with that said, the new Daniel Bryan's environmentalist mindset made him believe he was on a higher level when compared to the likes of AJ Styles' fans. Their shallowness and indulgence and nonsense was what fueled Bryan. He felt that he had a burden on his shoulders to make the world a better place, but AJ Styles though saw right through this virtue signaling. When it came down to it, Ryan violated his morals to win the title. Unfortunately though, as good as the build was, and it was, it didn't follow up their classic at TLC. The thing is, they were almost booked. Becky had just won the women's match, Brock and Finn were gonna face off, and they were still the main event. So something had to change here. It was very methodical and extremely slow, but technical. There was nothing outright wrong about the action, but it was on autopilot. They knew that they couldn't really go all out because, well, 
They didn't want to get the fans tired. They worked well targeting the arm and in AJ Styles' case the leg. The problem was the crowd didn't care and they didn't try to go all out. It also didn't help that the match didn't have the intensity of the feud, because this should have been no DQ. All of a sudden Eric Rowan came out and this was one of the loudest the crowd was during the match. And it wasn't that loud, I just wanted to mention that. He stood there and looked so damn out of place, it's like why are you even here? But he ended up interfering and dropping Styles leading to Brian retaining. He fouled up afterwards and Brian hit the knee. And it just wasn't the best match. But luckily, the next time they had a title match, they rectified. As to the feud, I enjoyed it. This was very good. Styles, you know, he, he, he brought out that pit bull mentality, that anger that everyone knows he has occasionally. It was great here. Is it just what's it called? The match should have been no DQ. It would have fit in line with the feud. Later that week on SmackDown, Brian said that a victory for himself is a victory for the planet and insulted the fans saying they don't know what winning feels like. And Rowan was somebody that shared similarities with his mind. He praised Rowan for reading all kinds of things. Sure, his hands are dirty, but he's his intellectual peer. Brian made mention of the hypocrite statement from AJ Styles and agreed. Why? Because he carries around the title. He said that this was bond to the skin of a cow. And he called the cow Daisy, described the life that Daisy could have lived if it wasn't for the pain she saw suffered for this and he threw the title in the trash brian brought out the new title and he called it the new symbol of the excellence and damn did it look ugly that title looked horrible but it really fit the new dan and brian well like this guy was really going all out to eradicate the waste the pollution or whatever in general whatever waste people were doing on the earth this guy was all about changing that aj styles interrupted full of anger because of brian disrespecting the title and he found it ironic that brian hates big companies yet he brought out the biggest insurance policy he could have rowan randy orton followed up and after the commercial break ali and jeff hardy were here he was talking to orton's like didn't you get beat up by a girl at the rumble and then there's samoa joe joe said that he's gonna defang the viper told hardy to shut up like it's an aa meeting mustafa's a boy upon men and he he reminded him of the Coquina Clutch from last week, and AJ, he asked him about Wendy. Okay, this is a promo that everybody talks about on Twitter every couple of weeks. It's like, oh, remember that time Samoa Joe did this? I did that. Like, I think if you go on Twitter, you have an idea of this promo. I'm pretty sure you memorized it verbatim, word for word. Even the expressions that Samoa Joe had, because they, they always put that thing on Twitter all the time. Shout out to my Twitter. A brawl and Susan Bryan refuses to defend against any of them. All of a sudden, Triple H interrupted. He told Bryan that he's not facing one of those guys. He's facing all of them in an Elimination Chamber match. A brawl continues as SmackDown goes off the air. Dan O'Brien received a home state welcome the following week and he was even called the son of Washington. He said that he finally spoke to people that understood what he wanted to do here. The new WWE Championship is a symbol for people to rally behind. The old title may have been a symbol of excellence, but it was also a symbol of excess. Unlike that, the title is a symbol for change. Rowan said that thinkers like himself and Daniel Bryan are considered dangerous. That's despite the ideas being good. Bryan said that he served a greater power than fame. He's the planet's champion. The planet needs him as champion. Later that night, Jeff Hardy was on the verge of beating the planet's champion when Rowan interfered. Samoa Joe refused to be forgotten and locked in the coquina clutch before Randy Orton made a run. AJ Styles comes in and Brian didn't want none. I mean, AJ Styles' theme song says and they don't want none. And that's what Brian did here. He started going off on how he's the best, called Rowan his intellectual peer, and denied him being his bodyguard. He's like, oh, I need somebody to think like me. It's not about him being my bodyguard. AJ Styles' music is playing all while Brian was telling himself that he's holding the title in a paranoid voice. He's all red, he's all angry in the background's AJ Styles' music. Unfortunately, Mustafa Ali was unable to compete in the Elimination Chamber match after suffering an injury. He said that it wasn't the end and that it'll take a whole lot more to take him out. You know, he was getting a little push at the time, so it's a bit unfortunate, but it also opened the door for somebody else. In a somewhat surprised turn of events, Kofi Kingston was chosen to replace him. It works because Kofi had a reputation on SmackDown. He was one of the most reliable guys, and sure, he wasn't going to win, but he was going to put on a show. With the Elimination Chamber coming up, all six men participated in the gauntlet match. Brian and Kofi had a long-ass match, and at face value, the champion was the champion, but even as champion, there's sometimes trouble in paradise. I hope you guys understood that. And in a huge upset... Kofi Kingston eliminated Daniel Bryan. He put in one hell of a performance going through everybody else before falling to AJ Styles. After SmackDown, I'll never forget this, I began seeing Photoshop edits of Kofi Kingston as WWE Champion. It was on Instagram, I'm like, what the hell? Already? I was like, damn, sign me up. This was the closest he got to the title in years, but we all believed it would end after the Elimination Chamber. Brian expressed displeasure for being first in the gauntlet match and now first in the Elimination Chamber. In terms of chamber matches, I said that word a lot. Top five, I think. I, I feel like it's the best in recent memory. It was that damn good. 
Feuds were ignited and championship hopes were dashed. For Kofi Kingston, this was a miracle waiting to happen. His performance really got the fans believing and since it was Daniel Bryan in the ring, it felt like a possibility. He was taking all this punishment and was dishing it out as well. Daniel Bryan was being eviscerated and the fans were all in. This was the same man they vicariously defended for years and now they found their new hero in spite of his attitude towards them. Somebody that actually represented them. Bryan caught Kofi with the knee and everybody knew it was over but man, he kicked out. Kofi bounced back with the trouble in paradise but it wasn't enough and his dream was slowly fading because he was locked in the label lock. He reaches the ropes and goes on the offense again but this time though, he made a crucial mistake leading to the knee and Bryan retains. The crowd wanted the Kofi win more than anything. It was what everyone hoped would happen and WWE made you believe it before taking it away. Kofi received a standing ovation for his performance but the disappointment was still on his face. His efforts turned up and unlocked the storyline that many had hoped and wished for, the WWE Championship story. Later that week on SmackDown, Kofi was looking forward. He appreciated the fans for looking out for him and making Kofi Mania trend and said that it wasn't possible if it wasn't for Big E and Xavier. He promised to keep his momentum going and that's exactly what Kofi did. He dropped Daniel Bryan with the Trouble in Paradise once again for the 1-2-3 in tag team action. Kofi Mania was starting to become a real thing and it was at the perfect time. Shane Mc man after the match came out and gave Kofi another title shot for Fastlane. And as he said, 11 years. He waited too damn long for it. What I most enjoyed about this storyline is the unpredictable element. At the time, Daniel Bryan was facing zero-time world champion Kofi Kingston. At face value, it's like, oh, he's beating him and facing insert name at WrestleMania. But the difference here was the incredible reception Kofi received over the last few weeks. I always wanted to see him win money in the bank, but the potential for this storyline was even better. It was all on WWE to follow up because the result could be one of the most compelling things in years. Kofi was a man of the people, his connection with the crowd was absolutely undeniable and being the deserving underdog gave this story a sense of realism. The fans repeatedly chanted at him that he deserved it and he's waited for 11 years for this opportunity. He acknowledged that this wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the fans and he said that at Fastlane, he's going to be Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. Bryan signs the contract and just as Kofi signs, Mr. McMahon interrupted. He told Kofi that he's appreciated everything over the past 11 years when he wanted to give the fans the biggest box office draw. So Kofi was being replaced. The New Day were his boys shouting and complaining and the replacement, McMahon said he was more deserving, more qualifying. It was Kevin Owens. Xavier and Biggie were backing him hard and this image looked so damn sad. Biggie's like, how much more does he have to do? After the commercial break, Kevin Owens showed gratitude for receiving this opportunity, but also mentioned the smile that Brian and Rowan had on their faces. He wanted to team up with Kofi, who was deserving of a title shot, against them. This match saw Kevin Owens score the victory with a stunner, and I believe this was the debut of the stunner for KO. Daniel Bryan didn't like Kofi being replaced by Kevin Owens and it went from the guy that threw pancakes to the guy that eat pancakes and compared him to the fans. He did praise him though for being a nobody because being a nobody means you have nothing to lose whereas he, Bryan, has everything to lose. He loses, the entire planet loses and he didn't want to be called a martyr but... But, but Kevin Owens interrupted, he didn't let him finish. Owens talked about watching every SmackDown while away on the couch, to which Brian said, where you belong. Owens loved watching SmackDown, but when Brian was on, it was awful watching him talk down to everyone. Speaking on everybody's behalf, Owens was glad to be the one that shuts up Brian. He told Owens that he shouldn't worry about his mouth, and KO felt that it was odd that the educated Daniel Bryan was resorting to fat jokes. He felt that Owens was low bro, and so were the fans, and Kevin Owens was glad to be like the people and thinking Bryan was a jackass. He said that he didn't have a reality show, a 7-foot backup dancer, and the champion said that the reason why he doesn't have one is because he doesn't have any friends left. Kevin Owens told him that it's his 100% intention to beat him and take the WWE title. He got into it with him, but the heels overwhelmed him, and his match with Rowan didn't end so well later that night, as he had to be saved by the returning Mustafa Ali. This was all Kevin Owens needed and by the end of it, he dropped the champion with a stunner. As for Kofi Kingston, he was promised a meeting with the boss. The fan support was extremely overwhelming. The New Day spoke on his behalf and told McMahon to do the right thing and make the title match a triple threat. He told him the match was on and New Day was barred from ringside. Kofi Kingston was extremely elated at receiving this opportunity, but it turned out to be a match with the bar. This match was a brutal beatdown of Kofi and New Day tried saving him, but Nakamura and Rusev attacked him. As for the WWE Championship match, it was still a triple threat. Everyone wanted it to be Kofi Kingston, but it ended up being Mustafa Ali. This was the match where I started looking at him differently. I knew he was talented, but it took one hell of a performance to get this crowd into the match you know you don't see that often where the crowd gets one back into the match after a decision goes the way they don't want it to. That's what Mustafa Ali did here. His selling and high flying abilities really got the fans into the match. Brian took him out initially leading to a one on one match with Kevin Owens. He had red beat chest and was full of aggression. It's a testament to these men's ability to turn things around. Ali was out here hitting a 450 on the apron, all to win the title. So many great spots and the Ali element really added to the match. It was already going to be good, but it was better. And the ending was awesome with Brian catching Ali with a vicious knee in the air to retain the title. It was really a well done match in spite of the crowd. As for the Kevin Owens arc, I think 
think we were going to see more of it, but Kofi Mane took over, so I don't really have much to say about it. I think it would have been interesting to see the family man Kevin Owens go one on one with the planet's champion. You know, he's like, oh, I'm just like these people. You think you're special? I'm taking you back down to earth or this and that. It would have been good, but what we got was even better. With Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali behind, Daniel Bryan still had to worry about Kofi Kingston. Mr. McMahon was set to make an announcement regarding WrestleMania at the same time, and he explained that when he made the triple threat, he didn't say Kofi was in the match and called him a failure. He said that match was for a reason. He was teaching him a lesson. The New Day said they didn't care. They said that they did everything for him, and this man has been here grinding for 11 years. McMahon said that Kofi, the people, don't deserve a damn thing. Even he doesn't deserve a damn thing. Diggy said that this is bigger than Vince's ego, which he didn't believe. He spoke on behalf of the fans, saying Kofi deserves a WWE Championship match. Kofi Mania was in full swing, and the fans refused to take no for an answer. McMahon said that he wished Kofi deserved this, and said that if he was worthy, it would have happened a long time ago. He praised him for his talent, and said that he's going into the Hall of Fame, but not by himself himself what a part of the New Day. He also claimed Kofi was riding Big E and Woods' coattails in a way. He wasn't outright saying it, but he was heavily implying it. He's good, but not championship material in the irony. Daniel Bryan's take was correct in his eyes. He had a meeting with him and said that Kofi Kingston is a B-plus player. And this is when he finally spoke. He said that 11 years ago, he was just a kid with a dream. Since then, he's provided for his family. He travels the world, but felt that at some point, his worthiness was proven. No complaining, despite his consistencies. Others get opportunities despite being inferior. His son lost his first tooth and he wasn't there because he was here no complaints he wasn't whining about that Kingston also held resentment for somebody like him not contending for the WWE championship and straight up told him to tell him what he needs to do so he could do it out of everyone to interrupt it was Randy Orton all he's got to do is beat him Samoa Joe the bar and Rowan in a gauntlet match and if he does he's going to Wrestlemania Man, WrestleMania seems like a continent away. Daniel Bryan, on the other hand, didn't see why he should even deserve a title shot, but Kofi was out to prove him wrong. Half of the episode saw Kofi go through the men go through the men that Vince lined up for him. It was rough. Log and Kofi was worn out by the end of it, but it just so happened that he managed to be on the winning side. Mr. McMahon came out and congratulated Kofi, and he said that Kofi is going to WrestleMania if he beats Dan O'Brien. For Brian, this was like the SCR 2010 menu. He's wrestling a dummy initially. Kofi had some fight, but it wasn't enough, and he lost. The New Day were furious with these turn of events and their boy was screwed over. The outpouring support for Kofi Kingston was still overwhelming and it wasn't going to stop. The hardest part of all this for Xavier and Big E was watching how badly Kofi was being treated. So now they wanted McMahon to address them face to face so they could talk about their issues. Dan O'Brien told McMahon to let them quit if they want because they're stale. He said that they could bring up three people from NXT and call them fresh afternoon. They'll be more successful because Kofi is a B-plus player. So basically, Dan O'Brien's taken the role of the authority back in 2014. He claims he's the A-plus player and assists with the hurdles from Mr. McMahon. It's a crazy turnaround from five years earlier. Brian praised McMahon's instincts for believing Kofi isn't good enough, and he said to the fans they're wrong, and similar to Kofi, they refuse to accept reality. Xavier Woods questioned Brian, saying he's scared of facing Kofi and turned into a hypocrite by becoming the very thing he hated. McMahon shut them up and said that the New Day won't quit. It's a lie. He told Kofi he's a B-plus player, but what about these two? Are you a B-plus tag team? So it was going to give them the opportunity to win Kofi his spot at WrestleMania. If they won the tag team gauntlet match, Kofi's going to WrestleMania. They went through Gallows and Anderson, Rusev and Nakamura, the bar, and then they got attacked. To top it all off, Biggie was sent through a table. The Usos were next, and the New Day were basically finished. The SmackDown Tag Team Champions were eager for a fight, and they grabbed the mic. They said that they've been through wars, but Kofi Kingston deserves a WWE title shot. He earned their respect, and Jimmy Uso told them, Good luck, because we forfeit. Incredible, incredible. I love that moment. They had this mutual respect for each other. They didn't really like each other, but at the end of the day, they could see what's real. And Kofi Kingston in the WWE Championship match is just that. Daniel Bryan in the back karate kicked the TV in outrage over these turn of events. After the commercial break, the final tag team in the gauntlet match came out. Bryan intelligently targeted Big E's knee, and the entire SmackDown roster was in support of the New Day. And with the support of everybody on their backs, they emerged victorious and won their friend, Kofi Kingston the opportunity to challenge for the most coveted gold in the WWE at WrestleMania. They took out Rowan and managed to win it by Kana, and that's what a friendship is all about. Kofi Kingston, through all the trials and struggles, was backed by his New Day brethren. Through it all, they broke the tag team championship record, defeated some of the greatest tag teams, but for Kofi, something was missing. 
Now he gets the chance to prove what he's made of and Vince build the match as being Daniel Bryan versus a B plus player. On the final SmackDown before WrestleMania, both men went face to face for a contract signing. Daniel Bryan wanted to teach him a lesson and he told the fans not to be complacent like Kofi Kingston has for 11 years. He told them not to be a bystander in their own lives, not to watch and hope while Xavier Woods and Big E try fighting for him. Daniel Bryan mentioned that he was in the same position as Kofi. The way they chanted yes is the same way they chant Kofi for him. He said that he doesn't feed off of it, they feed off him. Why? Because they're parasites. Ryan told him to suck all of this in because this is the best it's going to be and he finally spoke. Kofi Kingston told him that for months they've heard him try to talk but now he's the one who's going to educate him. Ryan became the world champion within the first two years of debuting. He understood it but 11 years and he's never had a singles match for the WWE Championship. He saw the fear in Ryan's eyes. He knows that he's ready and what comes next is WrestleMania where he becomes WWE Champion. Kofi signs, and man this was what we were all waiting for. Kofi Mania was real. We've all seen this guy come through as the excited Jamaican with all the moves in the world. His incredible move set easily stood out amongst one of the most stacked WWE rosters of all time and he captured the mid-card titles. Beat Randy Orton, multi-time tag team champion, but throughout this illustrious career he still didn't receive a one-on-one -on -one title shot for the World Heavyweight Championship or the WWE Championship. The appreciation the crowd had for Kofi Kingston was special. It was in many ways similar to Daniel Bryant, a man who was being deliberately held back in favor of others and in Kofi's case it was worse. Daniel Ryan's ability to fit seamlessly in the role that he fought against five years ago is a testament to his incredible talent. It's crazy that this man got the entire crowd booing him now despite these people cheering him like crazy five years earlier. I know it feels like Kofi Kingston basically took over this part of the video but that's literally it. I can't be talking about Kofi mania and try to undermine it or underrate it for the sake of another topic. Okay I wanted this match to main event back then and wish it still happened to this very day. Well, it is what it is. In the beginning, both men were slowly trying to find the edge. Nobody had the outright advantage, although the edge was with Kofi. His high-flying ability coupled with his impressive agility made him a problem for the new Dan O'Brien. But the same thing that brought him the advantage also sent him to defense. The champion had this meticulous eye for weaknesses going after the abdomen. He was locking in some mission holds making the match much more of a problem for Kofi and his offense was severely hampered by the work from Ryan but he had the WrestleMania World Championship match boost. He wasn't going down without a fight. Kofi avoids the knee and gets a two count before hitting the SOS. This led to him getting locked in the label lock. Ryan's stinging kicks were supposed to do a number on the abdomen but all they did was ignite the momentum that Kofi Kingston was searching for. Rowan gets involved leading to a brawl with the New Day and back in the ring Kofi was gonna get his moment. Ryan ducks and boom the knee. It was gonna end. It was a nice one while it lasted, but it was gonna come to an end. One, two, no. Brian's vicious streak emerged from the depths of hell and his burning desire of being the spokesperson for the planet was gonna drive him to victory. Kofi was locked in a bell lock. The hope was fading. Fans were trying to rally him on and for any other man, they would have given up, but this man had 11 years of fury and rejection. He beat Brian senselessly and his moment was coming. Trouble in paradise. One, two, three, new champion. Kofi Kingston's journey had its ups and downs, but there's no denying that that's what makes this moment so special. It wasn't meant to happen. Kevin Owens was heavily rumored to face Ryan at WrestleMania. Nobody had Kofi Mania on their cards, but it caught on like wildfire and ignited the fire that led to Kofi Kingston capturing the WWE Championship. This is easily one of the most special moments I've seen in wrestling. Wrestling is scripted, of course, but for a moment to be as special as this, it has to have a sense of realism. We didn't know Kofi would win here, and that element makes you want to see him win. His story was written for 11 years, and we've been wanting to see him as champion for years, even if it was a short title reign, and it finally happened at WrestleMania 35 in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Amazing, amazing. Match of the night for WrestleMania 35. Probably my favorite WWE match from 2019. I don't think there's any match that tops it in my mind. There was this amazing storytelling. The match itself was great. The action itself. And then you had the story on top of it of a man who was desperately searching for his first title shot, who was desperately looking to win his first world title in his first title match. It was a great match. It was amazing. For Brian, this was the proudest championship reign of his career. Being the Planet's Champion was by far my favorite. It's interesting because in WWE my reigns have never been very good. I won the championship at WrestleMania 30 but had to vacate it sometime later due to a neck injury and I also won the World Heavyweight Championship in 2011 but lost it in 18 seconds at WrestleMania 28. Those reigns didn't feel as special as when I was Planet Champion and Bad Boy. I love the way it started and everyone who competes hates to lose a championship but if we're going to lose it, let it be in a great match at WrestleMania against somebody who really deserves it. That's what happened when I lost that one against Kofi Kingston. I had a lot of fun with that reign and I love the Hemp Championship. Okay, that's Dan O'Brien's WWE Championship reign. I loved it. This is easily one of the best WWE title reigns in recent memory. It stands out like crazy. This man changed his entire character. The way he dressed was even different. His mic skills were great. The way he insulted the fans and his intentions were 
all amazing. His intentions were right. The execution was wrong, basically. Ryan's right about a bunch of things, but at the end of the day, he was a douche about it. His matches, great. Pay-per-view, all of them delivered except the Raw Rumble. I do wish we'd seen more of it, but Kofi Mania happened. You know, you can't let something like Kofi Mania just go because you want to see more of the new Daniel Bryan. Because he was eventually going to lose the title, right? Kofi Kingston wasn't going to get Kofi Mania if they let it go. For Bryan, this run cemented him as an all-timer, in my personal opinion. There's just something special about somebody that changes their entire character and succeeds. You know, to this very day, many people say, oh, the new Daniel Bryan was the best run of his career. You know, this is despite his yes mania his WrestleMania 30 run, this and that. People say this is his best run, and I could see exactly why. He really put his all into this character, and it's definitely no. So we love this character. Daniel Bryan, the new Daniel Bryan, is easily one of his best runs in his career. My favorite match from this run was Kofi Mania. It just has to be, right? You know, the story itself, it trumps everything. It tops everything in this run, in my personal opinion. So yeah. Alright, what you guys think of the new Daniel Bryan's run? Please comment down below. That's the first video. Make sure you hit the running knee on the like button, or perhaps the little bell lock on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.